This is, believe it or not, my GH7, and I've created this rig for it. It's basically a full-blown cinema rig, and by this I mean that if you want to use the 32-bit float adapter, it securely holds that in place so that it's very easy to plug multiple inputs into it and have great audio. In addition, the camera itself, I usually use in ProRes HQ in 4K recording or 5.7K recording. And the most important thing to me about this camera is that you can actually record in ARRI log, which is, I think, leaps and bounds beyond what some of the other mirrorless cameras have been offering. I like the ARRI log, number one, because I've used ARRI cameras in the past and really like the color response of the cameras. But the nice thing about this implementation of the ARRI LUT is that it carries forward all of those fantastic colors and it's so easy to grade when you go into, I use DaVinci Resolve and you basically just put the ARRI C-Log LUT on and it's almost ready to go. I mean, you can tweak and, you know, uh, process it to your heart's content, but with a ProRes HQ 10-bit file, you've got a lot of room to play around with it. So if there's any disadvantage to using this, it's that uh, at 13 plus dynamic range stops, it's not quite as good as what an ARRI Alexa would be, obviously. The other downside to it is that you're basically limited to 320 ISO at the lowest setting. And you can go above that, but it starts to get a little bit noisy. But the one thing I found is that even though I think on the V-Log setting on this camera, as opposed to the ARRI Log setting, I think this, the uh, base ISO is 800. Uh, but it seems that even at 320 ISO with the ARRI Log, it's about a stop faster. So it kind of makes up uh, between the two. And in that respect, there are a lot of great lenses available for Micro Four Thirds that have very wide apertures. Uh, this is a Siri anamorphic lens, which I've been experimenting with at 5.7K with this camera. And it actually looks incredible. But anyway, this video is about this rig. And basically, the basis of this rig is the Rigid Pro uh, Cine base for the GH6, GH7. And you'll see what I did is modify this top plate so that I can use a small rig helmet adapter, which was made for the S1H camera. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think small rig actually makes this adapter, but there's probably quite a few of those out there that you can find used or unsold. And I modified the adapter slightly and added a plate so it spaced it correctly. But the end result is that I now have a GHS camera with ARRI log, which is fantastic, and a 32-bit float audio module with two XLR inputs and a 1 8 inch uh, mini input as well. And I like to use an external viewfinder uh, because I'm old and it's hard to see a monitor up close sometimes. Uh, but you can actually just add a monitor to this rig. You don't have to use a viewfinder. And in fact, this viewfinder, I'd like to look into maybe getting one that's a little less heavy than this one, but for the time being, it works great. This is an older Zacuto Gradical HD. But what I did was the monitor is powered through this Rigid Pro system, and there's multiple D-taps over here. And of course, you have a Anton Bauer or V-mount battery you can put onto this. And basically you have the power coming out for the viewfinder and then the power coming actually into a dummy battery uh, made by Condor Blue that fits into the GH7. And the great thing about powering it this way is that everything is on one switch. So you can flip it on and off and be ready to go at a moment's notice that you don't have to worry about leaving things on uh, in your camera. So I'm going to just show you real quick how I put this rig together and the modifications I had to make on the Rigid Pro system. 
So let me first just go through some of the parts here. This is the GH7 with a small rate cage. And this is a rigid pro back made for the GH7, GH6. And this is the top plate for that kit. What I've done is I've modified this plate by cutting a uh, section out of it. And this is for the 32-bit float module that you can get for the GH7. And that'll fit down in there now. And you'll be able to securely lock this module onto the GH7, which is probably my biggest concern in floating this up on the camera like this in that I don't think it's particularly, even though it fits into the hot shoe, it just feels a bit kind of wonky to me that it's going to break off or, you know, it's not, not real stable. So the whole, one of the whole purposes of this rig is so that this will mount securely and not move around. And because it's a $400 item, so it doesn't break. So what we're going to do is we're going to mount this camera onto here, onto the Rigid Pro back, so I can also use a uh, anti-bower gold mount with it. Now some of the other pieces that I have here, um, this, this is a helmet, which small rig used to make, which I don't think is available anymore. But this actually will sit down on top of the uh, XLR adapter and hold it securely into place. And then I have a small rig handle, which actually will be mounted on backwards and you'll see why. And finally, I have a small rig base plate on which the camera can sit. And you can kind of adjust this and move it in and out to get the optimum balance on the camera. I'm gonna start with this piece, which is a custom piece of aluminum, 3 8 inch thick and about an inch wide. And this piece is designed so that it will sit onto here, onto the ridge, rigid pro plate and hold the helmet at the right spot. One of the problems with the helmet is that it, because it wasn't designed for this plate, it doesn't fit it quite right. So you got to base it. And what I did was I drilled two quarter inch holes to hold it to the rigid plate. And then I drilled and tapped two quarter inch holes, which will hold the helmet uh, post onto this. So this is probably the key to making this whole thing work. So the first thing I'm going to do is mount the camera back onto the rigid pro plate. And there's two screws on the bottom. Oh, I want to make sure I keep that door open. And then this plate, which I carved out here, is going to go back on top like that. And what's cool about this particular mounting box is that the camera viewfinder door or the monitor door can be used either as a monitor or you can flip it around and lay it flat against the base. Let me just point something out real quick. I had to carve out this back section here 
to leave enough space so that this can go in and slide forward. And that fits in there really nicely. And the trick now is you've got to kind of reach in there and flip over this lock switch. I didn't want to leave enough space in there for your finger because I, I'm kind of afraid of carving too much out of this plate because if I carve too much out, then I'm kind of losing some of the stiffness and the integrity of the plate itself. And now what I want to do is mount this piece onto here. I'm going to attach this to the, the top plate and that's going to fit on there like that. Um, one thing I want to point out on this top plate is this plate was actually designed for a small rig cage that fit on an S1H and an XLR1 audio adapter. This XLR2 adapter has these kind of raised features over here that actually allow you to put an external microphone on, but they actually get in the way of this helmet, which was made for the XLR1. So I had to route out some of the metal in here so this would sit nice and flat on top of there, like that. And now the next step is mounting this onto the platform. And the one thing I want to make sure of, if you can see it, is I want this adapter to be nice and tight on here so that the pressure holds it down against the camera body just a little bit so that it doesn't move around when you plug a microphone into it. And so there, you can open the door and you plug a microphone in there and it's not going to move around. And that is one nice solid unit now. I'm going to talk for a second about the handles for this. This particular helmet came with this handle that attaches onto this front rail like this and you can adjust it up and down and so forth. Um, it is nice because it has this hole in it that you can put a rod through to put your viewfinder on or monitor if you want to use that. Um, my concern with using this is that all of the tension and weight is now on this front piece and which I've weakened actually because of, of the hole in the center of it. So I think instead of putting this and then hanging the viewfinder off of it, I'm going to go back and use this small rig handle and put it on backwards. And in this case though, I'm going to mount this rod holder onto the front of it and put it in like this. Uh, that way the weight of the viewfinder is actually on the back piece here instead of the front and the, the forces will be all back here as opposed to in the front where I'm afraid that with this rig holding the helmet on there that it could loosen that or, or uh, tear it over time. So I think it's safer to just put the handle on the back. Again, I'm gonna put some removable Loctite on this thread and the pens because this is a joint that I think might get loose over time and I don't want that to happen. Now we've 
got a nice tight arrangement here. So now I'm going to mount the base plate onto here. As I said before, you can use either the monitor screen as your viewfinder or as an information display. Or I also have this, uh, the Kudo reticle, which slides into here. And then this cord can be brought around to power it. And that is one nice solid unit now. I want to wrap this up by showing another example of a Panasonic camera that I've created a rig for. This is actually a BS1H camera, which is based on the S1H camera, but it's a block version of it. And it's a full frame camera. And this is a small rig cage and the helmet that I've used, which is very similar to the one that I used in the GH7. Actually, it's the same small rig helmet. And I just had to do some minor modifications to get it to drop down correctly on top of the XLR1. Now, this is the XLR1, but I suppose you could probably use the XLR2, but this is an older rig, so it, uh, I had the XLR1 that I've been using. The BS1H also has a, an actual SDI output and timecode in and out as BNC connectors. And then up here, of course, you have your XLR connectors. So it makes it a very usable rig. I actually like it because it uses a smaller size battery. So when you're traveling, it's a bit more convenient. The only thing that I, I'm not crazy about on the BS1H as opposed to the VH, so the GH7, is it's a little hard to get to the menu items and stuff because you basically just have these buttons and you have to rely on the viewfinder or an external uh, monitor for use with that. But otherwise, it's an incredibly light and versatile rig that I've used a lot, actually. Again, thanks for watching. And hit the like button and please subscribe if you like the video.